There are two similar forms of resistance to motion, wind resistance and water resistance. They have the same basic principles behind them, but they operate in slightly different ways. In general, what you have is two atoms trying to push past each other. Where the contact happens, the one in motion is slowed down. The slowing force can be called resistance or drag, but essentially we're talking about the same process. In air, as you move your hand around, you feels like you're not actually encountering resistance, but you actually are. It's just at slow speeds, a relatively small surface area, but the force slowing down is relatively weak. The air resistance is caused by having to move the air molecules out of the way as the object moves through the area where the molecules used to be. It means if you have a large object, you can minimise the resistance by streamlining so the air is just gently deflected to one side from just kind of smashing into them. So things which need to minimise drag like bullets and cars, aircraft and even bicycles are designed to be as streamlined as much as possible. You also can minimise the res air resistance by passing through air which is actually less dense. Therefore you move fewer molecules of air. That's why aircraft fly at high altitudes. And then there's times actually when it's necessary to increase drag. Uh, this can be done by maximising the area they cover, like parachutes, or in planes when they're coming into land. In this case they lower their wheels, move the flaps on the wings, and even alter the angle at which they pass through the air, which dramatically increases the amount of air resistance and slows the plane down. And water, resistance is far greater because the molecules are heavier and there's more of them than in the air. Boats and even creatures like penguins adapt to this by streamlining, similar to that used for going through the air. However, due to the air being less resistant, they tend to push the water down into the sides rather than having it flow over the top. This means that some boats actually lift part of their hulls out of the water and some animals porpoise or leap through the air while swimming at high speed. In general, a rough, uneven surface dramatically increases the resistance so boats which have barnacles and other things attached to their hulls will move slower. In order to prevent this, sailing ships coated their uh, bottom of the wooden hulls in copper sheeting, led to the term the copper bottom guarantee. Modern ships use various paints and chemical coatings to keep them clear, however some of these can cause damage to the marine environment. A totally smooth surface, however, isn't the most efficient for reducing water resistance. Said a surface mirroring that of shark skin, which looks like kind of tiny backward facing duck feet, can create small vortexes around which uh, the surface they can actually suck the object forward. Another method is to cover the surface in tiny air bubbles to act as a lubricant between the water and the skin of the animal or ship. It's why you see a trail of bubbles appearing behind a penguin just before it's about to leap out of the water and onto the ice. That extra burst of speed from the bubbles gives it more lift and enables it to leap further onto the ice. This method is now being used by some commercial shipping to make them more fuel efficient. So that's water resistance and air resistance.